Terraform uses a declarative syntax, which allows for more accurate view of what actually deployed compared to procedural languages. In the procedural language, you describe the steps instead of desired state of the system, so it's easier to reason about and makes it easier to keep the code base small. Nevertheless, some tasks can be more challenging to accomplish using a declarative approach. For example, since declarative languages typically don't have for loops, how can you create more similar resources such as virtual machines without just copying and pasting? Also, if declarative language doesn't have if statements, how can you conditionally configure resources such as creating Terraform module that can deploy certain components in some environments but not in others. For example, enable this module on demand when it's required. Fortunately, Terraform offers some basic tools like count for each and for expressions and many functions which let you perform loop-like actions and conditional statements. Here are the topics we'll cover in this video. Loops, conditionals and Terraform pitfalls. Terraform provides a variety of looping structures, each designed for a specific use cases and scenarios. The count parameter enables looping over resources and modules in Terraform. For each expressions are used to iterate over resources, inline blocks within a resource and modules in Terraform. For expressions to loop over lists and maps. For string directive to loop over lists and maps within a string. Let's explore each of these individually. Think about this Terraform code that configures AWS provider, creates AWS VPC and a subnet. This code creates one subnet in your VPC using AWS subnet resource. But what if you want to create three subnets instead of one? In a regular programming language, you'd likely to use a for loop for that. Terraform doesn't include for loops or common programming logic, so the given code won't work. But there is a meta argument called count you can use in Terraform resources. Count is a Terraform's oldest, simplest and least flexible way to make several copies of a resource. To create three subnets, you can use count variable like this. The issue with this code is that all three subnets would share the same cedar block, leading to an error because each subnet needs a unique cedar block within VPC. If you could use a typical for loop, you might use a loops index i to assign a unique cedar range to each subnet. To achieve the same result in Terraform, you can use count index to get the index of the each iteration in the loop. When you run Terraform plan with a given code, Terraform tries to create three subnets. Each subnet has a slightly different cedar block, but they're not valid. Since the subnet ranges are not valid, we need a different way to create multiple subnets. By using count.index along with some built-in Terraform functions, we can better customize each step of the loop. For instance, we can create a Terraform variable called subnet cedar blocks, which will hold a list of cedar blocks. This lets us give the necessary cedar ranges without depending on the loops index to change our Terraform resources. In a regular programming language that has loops and arrays, you would set each subnet to use a unique cedar block by finding the value at index i in the array called var subnets cedar blocks. In a Terraform, you can achieve the same result by using count together with the following. Terraform includes a function called length, which has this format length and it accepts the array. As you might expect, the length function gives the total number of items in the provided array. It also works with strings and maps. Then the way to access elements in the array in Terraform is like in many other programming languages, array and then index. For example, to find the element at index 1 in the var subnet cedar blocks variable, you would use the following syntax. When you run the plan command now, you'll notice Terraform plans to create three subnets, each having a unique cedar block. Keep in mind that once you apply count to a resource, it turns into an array of resources rather than just one resource. As AWS subnet.example is now an array of subnets, you need to use a different way to get attribute from that resource. 
instead of using usual format provider type name attribute, you have to mention the specific subnet you want by indicating its position in the group using the array lookup method. For instance, to get the subnet ID of the first subnet in the list as output variable, you would need to use the following syntax. If you want to get IDs of all of the subnets, you need to use a splat expression instead of index. When you run apply command, the first ID output will show you only the ID of the first created subnet, while all IDs output will display a list of IDs for all the created subnets. Starting from Terraform version 0.13, you can use count parameter with modules as well. For example, consider a module that can create one subnet in your VPC. The subnet seeder block is provided to this module as input variable. The module then returns the ID of the created subnet as output variable. To create three subnets using this module and the count parameter, you would do the following. Then, to display the IDs of created subnets, you can do the following. Similar to how using count on a plain Terraform resource transforms it into array of resources. Applying count on a module changes it into array of modules. If you run apply command on this code, you'll see the following output. Unfortunately, count has two limitations that significantly reduce its usefulness. First of all, you can use count to loop over entire resource, but it's not possible to do it within the resource with inline blocks. For example, consider how firewall rules are set in the security group. Each ingress rule requires you to create a new inline block with values for ports and seeder blocks. This Terraform code opens a single port 80 from all IP addresses, but you might want to allow users to pass additional rules, for example, to open 443 port for TLS as well. You might be tempted to try to use count parameter to loop over these ingress rules and generate dynamic inline ingress blocks, but unfortunately using count with an inline block is not supported. The second limitation with count is what happens when you try to change its value. Consider the list of subnets we have created earlier. Imagine that you removed second cinder block from this list. What happens when you run Terraform plan now? Hold on, that result might surprise you. Instead of only removing the second subnet with DAT32 cinder block, Terraform's plan shows it wants to change DAT32 to DAT64 and get rid of the original DAT64 subnet. What's happening here? When you use count parameter on a resource, that resource becomes an array of resources. Unfortunately, the way Terraform identifies each resource within the array is by its position index in that array. That is, after running apply for the first time with three subnets, Terraform's internal representation of these subnets looks something like this. When you remove an item from the middle of the array, all the items after it shift back by one, so after running plan with just two cinder blocks, Terraform's internal representation will look something like this. Notice how that 64 block has moved from index 2 to index 1. Because it sees the index as resource identity to Terraform, this change roughly translates to rename the bucket at index 1 to that 64 subnet and delete the bucket at index 2. In other words, every time you use count to create a list of resources, if you remove an item from the middle of the list, Terraform will delete every resource after that item and recreate those resources again from scratch. The end result, of course, is exactly what you requested – two subnets with dot .0 and dot .64 ranges. But deleting resources is probably not how you want to get there, as you may have EC2 instances running in those subnets. You might not be able to replace that subnet if it's been used by virtual machines, and it could be even worse if you lose data, like if you delete a database, you could lose all its data. With a simple count, it's not possible. To solve these limitations, Terraform.12 introduced for each expressions. The for each expression enables iteration over lists, sets, 
and maps, allowing you to generate multiple instances of entire resource, multiple instances of inline block within a resource, or multiple instances of a module. Let's first walk through how to use for each to create multiple copies of a resource. The syntax looks like this, where collection is a set or map to loop over, lists are not supported when using for each on a resource, and config consists of one or more arguments that are specific to that resource. With config, you can use each.key and each.value to access the key and value of the current item in collection. For example, here's how you can create the same three subnets using for each on a resource. Note that we use to set to convert subnet cedar blocks list into a set. This is because for each supports sets and maps only when used on a resource. When for each loops over this set, it makes each cedar range available in each dot value. The cedar range will also be available in each dot key, but you typically use each dot key only with maps of key value pairs. Once you have used for each on a resource, it becomes a map of resources rather than just one resource or array of resources as with count. To understand what this means, include a new output variable called all subnets. This is what happens when you run transform apply command. You can see that Terraform created three subnets and that all subnets output variable contains a map where the keys are the keys in the for each, in this case the cedar blocks, and the values are all the outputs for that resource. If you want to bring back the all IDs output variable, you would need to do a little extra work to extract those subnet IDs using the values built-in function which returns just values from a map and splat expression. This produces expected output and you get all the subnet IDs in the console. The fact that you now have a map of resources with for each rather than array of resources as with count is significant since it allows you to remove items from the middle of a collection safely. For example, if you again remove the 32 cedar from the middle of the var subnet cedar blocks list and run terraform plan, here's what you'll see. That's much better. You're now deleting solely the exact resource you want without shifting all of the other ones around. For this reason, it's typically preferable to use for each instead of count to create multiple copies of a resource. The behavior of for each with modules is almost the same. Using the same subnet module from earlier, you can create three subnets with it using for each as follows, and you can output the IDs of those subnets using this output variable. When you run apply on this code, you get expected output. Let's now turn our attention to another advantage of for each, its ability to create multiple inline blocks within a resource. For example, you can use for each to dynamically generate ingress inline blocks for the security group in the AWS security group Terraform resource. First of all, let's create a new custom ports variable. Let's open port 80 for everyone and port 8081 to only entities within our VPC. Well, typically we would use security group ID, but for this example, let's stick with cedar blocks. Next, let's create AWS security group resource and attach it to the main VPC that we created earlier. This code opens port 80 to the internet. Now, to open additional port, we need to copy paste it and update the port and potentially the cedar block. Now, to make this code dry, you would need a for loop like this. The previous pseudocode won't work, but for each expression will. The syntax for using for each to dynamically generate inline blocks looks like this, where var name is the name to use for the variable that will store the value of each iteration. Collection is a list or map to iterate over and the content block is what to generate from each iteration. You can use var name dot key and var name dot value within the content block to access the key and value respectively of the current item in the collection. 
and when using for each with a map, the key and value will be one of the key value pairs in the map. Putting this all together, here is how you can dynamically generate multiple firewall rules within the same security group. Now, if you run plan, you should see that Terraform will generate two ingress blocks based on your input. Let's go over another very common use case. For example, we want to create multiple EC2 instances in different availability zones. We can create a map variable that will hold all possible properties that we want to customize, including instance type for each instance and availability zone. Here we want to spin up two Nginx servers in US East 1A and US East 1B. Let's use for each expression to iterate over this local variable. We'll take the instance type from the value of the map as well as availability zone. Now for the name we want to use the key such as nginx-0 and nginx-1. Now you can on demand adjust any specific properties of the EC2 instance. You don't have to update all of the instance types at the same time causing the downtime. Now you know how to create multiple copies of entire resources and inline blocks by using loops. But what if you need a loop to change just one variable or parameter? For example, you have a Terraform code that has a variable that holds the names of the VPCs that you want to create. Maybe you need a main VPC and a dedicated VPC for the databases for some security reasons. Well, maybe you have certain naming conventions that you want to follow and you need to capitalize the first letter of each word for certain attributes and keep the lowercase for others, such as id for instance. In a general purpose programming language, such as Python, you could write the following for loop and use built-in title function, which returns a string where the first character in every word is uppercase, like header or a title. Also, Python offers another way to write the exact for loop in one line using syntax known as list comprehension. Even more, Python also allows you to filter the resulting list by specifying condition such as return VPC names that are less than 5 characters long. Terraform provides a feature called for expression. Don't mix it up with for each expression you saw earlier that does something similar. The basic syntax of a for expression as follows where list is a list to loop over, item is the local variable name to assign to each item in a list, and output is expression that transforms item in some way. For example, here is a Terraform code that does exactly the same thing as Python. It capitalizes every first character in each word. If you run Terraform apply on this code, you get the following output with your VPC names. You can see the first letter is uppercase now. Just as in Python's list comprehensions, you can filter the resulting list by specifying a similar condition based on the number of characters in the word. If you would run Terraform apply, you'll get a single main VPC as output. Terraform's for expression also allows you to loop over a map using the following syntax. Here map is a map to loop over, key and value are the local variable names to assign to each key value pair in map, and output is an expression that transforms key and value in some way. Here is an example with my VPC's variable. When you run Terraform apply on this code, you get the following list of strings and not maps. You can also use for expressions to output a map rather than a list using the following syntax. The only difference that you wrap the expression in curly braces rather than square brackets, and rather than outputting a single value each iteration, you output a key and value separated by an arrow. For example, here is how you can transform a map to capitalize every first letter for each key and value in the map. Here is the output from running this code and we get expected result with capital letters. Well, you can use any built-in function that Terraform has with this for loop-like structure. 
In the final loop section, we'll go over string directives. They allow you to use control statements like for loops and if statements within strings using a syntax similar to string interpolations. But instead of a dollar sign and curly braces, you use a percent sign and curly braces. Terraform supports two types of string directives for loops and conditionals. In this section, we'll go over for loops. We'll come back to conditionals later in the video. The for string directive uses the following syntax, where collection is a list or map to loop over. Item is the local variable name to assign to each item in collection. And body is what to render each duration, which can reference item. Here is an example with the same VPC names. When you run Terraform Apply, you get following output with all your VPC names and commas. There is also a version of the for string directive syntax that gives you the index in the for loop. Here's another example using the index. When you run Terraform Apply, you get the list of names and index for each item. Now you can see in both outputs there is extra trailing comma and space. You can fix this by using conditionals, specifically the if string directive as described in the next section. Just as Terraform offers several different looping methods, there are also multiple ways to implement conditionals, each designed for a specific use case. Count parameter used for conditional resources. For each and for expressions used for conditional resources and in line blocks within a resource. If string directive used for conditionals within a string. Let's look at each of these one by one. The count parameter you saw earlier lets you do a basic loop. If you're smart, you can use the same method to perform a simple if then statement. Let's take a look at the following simple example. Let's say you have a main VPC and in some environments you may need to create additional VPC for the databases. In a general programming language, it's easy, just wrap your resource into if statement. In this case, if enable database VPC variable is set to true, we'll create this additional VPC, otherwise we'll ignore it. Terraform doesn't support if statements, so this code won't work. However, you can accomplish the same thing by using the count parameter and taking advantage of two properties. If you set count to 1 on a resource, you get one copy of that resource. If you set count to 0, that resource is not created at all. Terraform supports conditional expressions of the format condition, question mark, true value and false value. The syntax, which may be familiar to you from other programming languages, will evaluate the boolean logic in condition and if the result is true, it will return true value and if the result is false, it will return false value. Putting these two ideas together, we can conditionally create database VPC on demand. If var enable VPC is true, the count parameter for AWS VPC resource will be set to 1, so one of each will be created. If var enable database VPC is false, the count parameter for the AWS VPC resource will be set to 0. In that case, only main VPC will be created. This is exactly the conditional logic you want. Now let's quickly create a simple Terraform module that has the same variable and in the main.tf we copy paste the same code. Let's try to run plan with this module. It should create only a single VPC since we set default value for enable database VPC to false. To create that additional VPC, just set enable database VPC variable to true and run plan again. Now it will create two VPCs instead of one. In the previous video, we used a similar approach to enable EKS module on demand so that it allows you on demand deploy autoscaler in some environments. Now that you know how to do if statement, what about if else statement? For example, what if you want to create in some cases public subnet and in others 
private subnet. This code can be a part of the module. So we have the enable public variable that will decide what subnet will be created. Now in general programming language you would do the following. You would create if then statement. If the enable public variable is true, we'll create public subnet. And if it's false, we go ahead and create the private subnet. To do this in char form, you can use a count parameter and a conditional expression on each of the resources. For the second AWS VPC resource, just flip 0 to 1. That's pretty much all you need to do to create if then statement in Terraform. Right now, we have the default variable set to true. If we run Terraform plan, it will try to create public subnet. Now let's flip enable public to false. If you run Terraform plan again, it will try to create only private subnet. Now that you have ability to create one resource or other based on if else condition, what to do if you need to access an attribute on the resource that actually got created? For example, what if you wanted to add an output variable called subnet ID, which contains the ID of the subnet you created? The simplest option is to use following syntax. This will work fine for now, but this code a little bit brittle. If you ever change the conditional in the count parameter of the AWS VPC resources, perhaps in the future, it'll depend on multiple variables and not solely on enable public. There is a risk that you'll forget to update the conditional in this output variable. And as a result, you'll get a very confusing error when trying to access array element that might not exist. A safer approach is to take advantage of the concat and one functions. The concat function takes two or more lists as inputs and combines them into a single list. The one function takes a list as input and if the list has zero elements, it will return null. If the list has one element, it returns that element. And if the list has more than one element, it shows an error. Putting these two together and combining them with a splat expression, you get the following. Depending on the outcome of the if else conditional, either public subnet will be empty and private will contain one element or vice versa. So once you concatenate them together, you'll have a list with one element and one function will return that element. This will continue to work correctly no matter how you change your if-else conditional. Using count and built-in functions to simulate if-else statements is a little bit of hack, but it's one that works fairly well. And as you can see from the code, it allows you to conceal lots of complexity from your users so that they get to work with clean and simple API. That's pretty much all for this video. In the following videos, we'll cover more Terraform features and best practices, as well as other infrastructure as code tools.